In the heart of a close-knit neighborhood, there lived a couple, Mark and Emily, who were overjoyed to welcome their first child into the world. Baby Leo was born on a rainy spring morning, his arrival filling their home with warmth and laughter. From the moment he came into their lives, Mark and Emily felt an overwhelming love for him. Leo was the kind of baby that could melt even the hardest of hearts with just a single smile, but there was a storm brewing in their family that would soon bring heartbreak and confusion. Mark came from a conservative family where traditional beliefs ran deep. His parents, especially his father, had very strong opinions about what was right and wrong in the world. Growing up, Mark had always been taught that there was only one acceptable way to live life. Anything outside of those narrow beliefs was wrong, even immoral. Mark had always feared how his family would react if anything in his life ever challenged those rigid views. As Leo grew older, even as a baby, he exhibited traits that worried Mark's family. It wasn't something you could easily define, but there was a gentle sensitivity to Leo that made Mark's father uncomfortable. Every time Leo reached out for a doll instead of a toy car, or when he giggled with delight at his mom's jewelry, Mark's father would frown. He'd grumble under his breath, that boy needs to toughen up, or he's too soft, boys should be strong. At first, Mark tried to brush it off, reassuring himself that Leo was still just a baby. But deep down, Mark began to fear something he couldn't quite articulate. He feared his son might one day face the judgment, rejection, and cruelty of the world, and worse, of their own family. Leo, of course, was too young to understand any of this. He continued to play, laugh, and explore the world around him with the wide-eyed wonder that only children possess. But as the months passed, the pressure began to build. Mark's father became more vocal about his disapproval. Every family gathering seemed to end with a tense conversation or an uncomfortable silence. Emily, who had always been fiercely protective of Leo, would bite her tongue to keep the peace, but the emotional strain weighed heavily on her. Then during a family dinner, everything changed. Leo, now a toddler, was playing with his cousin's princess doll. He twirled around the living room, his laughter echoing through the house. Mark's father, watching from the couch, grew visibly irritated. His face darkened as he stood up abruptly and marched over to Leo. He ripped the doll from his tiny hands and threw it across the room. Boys don't play with dolls, he bellowed. The room fell into a stunned silence. Leo, confused and frightened by his grandfather's outburst, began to cry. Emily rushed over, scooping him into her arms and holding him close. She glared at Mark's father, her protective instincts kicking in full force. But Mark stood frozen, torn between the love for his son and the deep-seated fear of defying his father. After what felt like an eternity, Emily spoke up, her voice trembling with emotion. He's just a child, she said softly. Let him be who he is. Mark's father turned to her, his face red with anger. Not in my house, he growled. I won't have my grandson growing up like that. It's unnatural. If you don't teach him to be a man, the world will. Emily's heart broke. She had always known that Mark's family was conservative, but she never imagined they would reject their own grandchild because of something as innocent as the toys he played with. She held Leo tighter, feeling his small body tremble against hers. That night, Mark and Emily had the conversation they had been avoiding for far too long. Mark was torn. He loved his father and had always looked up to him, but he couldn't deny the love he felt for Leo. He couldn't stand by and let his son be treated this way. Emily, exhausted and heartbroken, made it clear that they needed to protect their child, no matter the cost. The following day, they made a decision. They packed their bags and left the family home where they had been staying, moving into a small apartment on the other side of town. It wasn't much, but it was theirs. And more importantly, it was a safe space for Leo. Life in their new home wasn't easy. They faced financial struggles and Mark found himself at odds with his father, who refused to speak to him. But despite all the hardships, there was a new sense of peace in their lives. They no longer had to walk on eggshells or worry about Leo being judged for being himself. As Leo grew, his personality blossomed. He was a bright, sensitive child who loved to draw, sing, and dance. He had a natural gift for creativity, and Emily made sure to nurture that side of him. Mark, too, learned to embrace Leo's unique spirit. 
He realized that being a man didn't have to mean being tough or emotionless. His son's strength lay in his kindness, his empathy, and his courage to be different in a world that often demanded conformity. But the world outside their home wasn't always as kind. When Leo started preschool, he was bullied by other children who had picked up on the same sensitivity that Mark's father had once criticized. They called him names and made fun of the way he played, and Leo would come home in tears more often than not. Mark and Emily were devastated. They had hoped that moving away from Mark's family would shield Leo from judgment, but they quickly realized that homophobia, even in its subtle forms, was everywhere. They couldn't change the world overnight, but they could teach Leo how to be strong in the face of it. Emily started reading him stories about acceptance and self-love. Mark spent hours playing with Leo, showing him that it was okay to be exactly who he was. They enrolled him in an art class where he thrived, making friends with other children who appreciated his creativity and sensitivity. As the years went by, Leo grew into a confident, compassionate young boy. He learned to ignore the cruelty of others and focus on the love that surrounded him. Mark and Emily, despite the hardships they faced, knew they had made the right choice. They had chosen their son's happiness and well-being over the approval of others, and they never regretted it. One evening, years after they had moved away, there was a knock at the door. Mark opened it to find his father standing on the doorstep, looking older and more fragile than he remembered. Without a word, his father handed him a small box. Inside was the princess doll that had been thrown across the room all those years ago. I was wrong, his father said, his voice breaking. I didn't understand, but I see now. I'm sorry. Mark, tears in his eyes, nodded. It had taken years, but his father had finally come around. He wasn't asking for forgiveness. He was asking for understanding, for a chance to be part of Leo's life again. That night, Leo played with his grandfather for the first time. They built towers with blocks, drew pictures, and laughed together. It wasn't perfect, but it was a start. Leo, in his innocence, had brought about a change that years of arguments and disagreements never could. <laughs>